Welcome back to Switched to Linux. It is Monday, it is time for another Linux Top 5. And we are going to be doing a few things different today. First, uh, I might stick with this microphone for a while. Let me know how this sounds in a pair compared to other... Uh, uh, compared to using the USB mic. Um, I do still want to get a replacement for the USB mic that died, but uh, this one here is a much more professional setup. Downside, uh, it requires an extra sound mixer, uh, another receivers and stuff like that. Upside, a lot better consistent sound as I go here, as I go there, because the sound just follows me. It doesn't look too dorky either. Just slightly dorky, slightly geeky. I look like a call center guy. <laughs> All right, but anyway, we're going to be on to our top five today, and what we're going to discuss today is the top five Linux packages for content creation, and I realize I can take that word Linux out. Every one of my top fives I'm going to be talking about today are cross-platform, whether you are on Windows, Mac, or Linux, you can use these packages that we're going to be talking about uh, here today. And what we're going to be doing, uh, a few other things I'm doing a little bit differently, is I'm going to be doing, um, uh, trying to up the video quality. So we're kind of still in that transition. I'm still trying to get the uh, a few of the things done. So uh, let me know uh, how things are looking down there in the comments. Is this a, a better format? Do you like what we're doing here? Um, so the first thing what we are going to do is we are going to begin with our number one. Our top pick is Inkscape, and uh, I kind of put these in order uh, because I put Inkscape first, not because it's always the most used, but because we generally need logos or other types of graphics that require a vector-based system. Now, here's something to keep in mind. When we are dealing with images, uh, we there are raster images and there are vector images, and there are times to know when you want a vector and when you want a raster. Uh, if you need vector-based images, then Inkscape is your best place to go. So Inkscape itself, uh, first let's go ahead and have a look at their website. Um, Inkscape is cross-platform. You can download it for Windows, Mac, Linux, and possibly, I don't know if they have a BSD or whatever. Uh, you can get the source code. Um, you can do GNU Linux, Windows, Mac, OS. You can get a lot of information. So the Adobe correlation of this would be Illustrator. Now, why do you want to use open source? You know, don't you get slightly better use if you're using these? And the answer is, is sometimes but realize a lot of people who know how to use Illustrator and try and use Inkscape go, it feels clunky. It's because you've been trained and you've been using and have a lot of experience on that. Uh, take it from me. I have a lot of experience on the Adobe packages because I've been a developer with those packages for a long time. But with Windows doing what Windows did, I had to get off a of Windows platform. So I switched over to Linux. And then since I've been using the Linux systems, I'm using all of these software packages and they all work better than the ones after you learn how to use them. So Inkscape can be difficult to use if you're not familiar with uh, this type of application, but it certainly is an application that is, uh, it is a, a usable platform. So here is Inkscape. Now, uh, this is my home cooking hacks channel. Um, I do not have the fonts installed on this computer that I used for that. Um, but basically I have, uh, this guy here is a, uh, is a font layer. You can do a lot of things with the font layers. Um, I have image layers on top of image layers. So there's a lot of different layering you can do. Now, the reason you use a vector program is because all of the data for the image is all scalable. It's all done by mathematics. So if I needed to increase the size of this, it will 100% scale as much as I want without any flaws. But you can't do that on raster-based images. So that's why you want to consider Inkscape for the first tool that you might need in content creation. Albeit, it's probably not the one you turn to the most. I put it number one because we need logos, and that's really, really what's going to help you out in, in that respect. Number two we are going to have a look at Blender. So Blender, again, is one that uh, most people may not get into it a lot. You might even, depending on what you need and your needs, you might just want to hire somebody else to do this part. But oftentimes, your channels are going to have uh, a lot of good 3D animations. So the opening on my, the opening six second clip at the beginning of all my videos, that is recorded in Blender. And uh, the transition animations that you just saw now, part of the new features of this, is also recorded in 
Blender. So here is their website. The good thing about Blender is there are just tons of online tutorials. So while it is a more complicated program to use, because it is a 3D animation studio, it basically combines your timelines, it combines your movements, your graphic design, your image design, just all those different facets. All of those guys are, uh, are kind of... Uh, all important and this is like I said a little bit more complicated system to use but there are also a lot of tools once again come to the download page you can download it for uh, Linux systems and uh, you can also download this for uh, Mac and for Windows versions so here's your Windows 64 32 bit Mac OS X it's actually a Steam download of it that's interesting so uh, that is Blender and uh, if you'd like to see a little bit about what Blender looks like, here is the Blender file for that transition screen that you just saw. So here it's basically on a 3D stage. Uh, you can uh, go to your camera view like this. Let me actually uh, go back to the camera view and uh, move stuff around a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. And then of course there's timeline stuff down here so you can actually see what the timelines look like as it moves. So you can do your various animations in your system, and uh, this is Blender. So I've on this one here is a very simple uh, two and a half second clip uh, done at 30 frames per second, and all that stuff is all adjustable. Uh, so this is certainly one of those uh, one of those tools that you uh, you are going to want to consider using. Number three is OBS Studio. So OBS Studio is what I use to record the majority of my videos. Some of my videos are, are actually, um, some of them I actually record with, uh, with Simple Screen Recorder, but OBS usually is the one that I want to use more often than not, uh, if, particularly if I'm doing something on my main computer here built for video production. And uh, the reason I like this is a lot of the things that you can do with OBS, you can decrease your post-production time. And anything you can do to decrease your post-production production time is always going to help you out. So this is what allows me to put my animated videos in the background. While I can record the clips and the footage and put all this together in Caden Live, uh, which is an application I'll use to do my video editing, OBS makes it easy to create scenes that you can uh, that you can in incorporate into all of your different systems and that will make it a whole lot easier to uh, to do a lot of things without having to go back and forth. And so here is what my OBS setup is going to look like right now and I actually have a variety of different collections and scenes so up here under my scene collection I have one for specific live streaming I have just a general one this is my new top five stream I just created it uh, where I will be able to pick and select each one of the options as I come in and then transition them over and of course I have this on the studio mode right now so it shows me my audio it makes sure I'm not redlining my audio which allows me to to make sure we're not being too loud um, and then I can do a whole lot of other things back and forth. Number four is GIMP. This is an acronym for uh, the GNU Image Manipulation Program. And GIMP is a, this is an application that I use pretty much daily on this type of stuff uh, because I wanna, I, I use GIMP to produce the banners that I have, uh, the, the little images, just all of those little little odds and ends things that, uh, that are important to use. And so GIMP, their website is, uh, is up here and uh, so it's gimp.org and what GIMP is going to allow you to do is any type of things that you could do on Photoshop you could do on GIMP now this is an example of a raster application um, rather than a vector application so that's a little bit different than um, than your Inkscape was but this one here allows you to do all of those types of uh, Photoshop -y things so here is what my screenplay for this looks like uh, I basically have one file which is the this banner file that has this all of this information here for my banners and then whenever I need to create a new banner I just come down here and change in whatever I want this to be save it as in uh, the case of some of them I'll save them just as title PNG or the other ones I will save as you know one two three four five PNG to drop these onto my uh, my top five so GIMP is uh, and I have an entire uh, playlist on GIMP so you can learn a little bit more about how to use GIMP 
number five is Caden Live. So Caden Live is a, just a fabulous program that I use for editing. There are, again, a few other image editor or um, uh, video production, production tools inside of... Uh, inside of uh, Linux and other open source platforms but the one I use is Kaden Live and I use Kaden Live simply because um, it has all of the features you'd find in the most professional video editors it's uh, there's a little bit more of a learning curve to something like OpenShot for example which is a little bit more like a Windows Live Movie Maker but Kaden Live can really do high very high quality uh, good production things and uh, in fact um, this is their website here. It's cadenlive.org. Uh, if you go over to download, once again, you can you get these on Windows and Mac. I'm not sure if this is, you might actually have to compile this uh, for the Mac pr uh, program, but you can actually get the, um, you can actually get the Windows uh, release over there as well. Although this was primarily created for, uh, for a GNU Linux platform. So it is, uh, it is still a, a very wonderful application. I use this on a, uh, uh, on a regular basis. Okay, so here is your Caden Live build. So I basically have this is actually just a sample clip down here where I can uh, drop in various clips on the timeline. I can uh, dissolve them. I can do a variety of other things there. So you can see what this looks like just kind of as it as it moves along. And then I can actually add title clips. I can add a lot of other tools. And I have, uh, again, more videos and tutorials about how to use this particular one. So these have been my top five picks for open source Linux packages. And again, why do we want to use uh, why do we want to use the open source packages? Well, it's a lot of it for me is because the the closed source packages, those closed source packages, um, a lot of times they want to come in and they want to either charge you a whole lot more, or for example, 3ds Max, which is the closed source version of a Blender essentially, they're now charging $185 a month subscription fee to use their application. You can't buy it as a single download. Office is moving towards a subscription download Photoshop and and other Adobe suites which would cover our Inkscape and our and our GIMP those are also now subscription uh, fees only and Caden Live I just don't know what uh, what uh, if there's a subscription fee for a more uh, production or um, a more closed source system one of those so these are uh, these are some some applications to keep in mind as you are doing your video production and uh, see if that helps you out so with that I'm gonna say thanks for watching and the kitty says use open source it's way better so the kitty endorses open source. So thank you for watching. If you would like to help support what we're doing here at Switch to Linux, you can check out switchtolinux.com forward slash support, and you can learn about uh, the various ways that you can help us out. Uh, as of this recording, we have Patreon, we have Amazon links down below, and there is a direct PayPal uh, link on the, uh, the Switch to Linux uh, channel website and also on switchtolinux.com forward slash support. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.